Today, as we pray the Stations of the Cross on this anniversary, on, on the eve of the death of Mother Angelica, we will use for our prayers and, and meditations words from her writings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Mary, my mother, you were the first to live the way of the cross. Your eyes were ever on Jesus and his pain. Take my hand as I make this way of the cross. Inspire me with the thoughts that will make me realize how much he loves me. Give me light to apply each station to my daily life and to remember my neighbor's needs in this way of the cross. Obtain for me the grace to understand the mystery, the wisdom, and the divine love as I go from scene to scene. Grant that my heart, like yours, may be pierced through by the sight of Jesus' sorrow and misery, that I may determine never to offend him again. Sweet Mother, let us travel this way together and grant that the love in my poor heart may give you some slight consolation. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. My Jesus, the world still has you on trial. It keeps asking who you are and why you make the demands you make. It asks over and over if you are God's son. Why do you permit the world to be in the state that it is in? Why are you so silent? Although the arrogance of the world angers me, I must admit that silently in the depths of my soul, I too have these questions. Your humility frustrates me and makes me uncomfortable. Your strength before Pilate, as you drank deeply from the power of the Father, gives me the answer to my question, the Father's will. The Father permits many sufferings in my life, but they are all for my good. If I only too could be silent in the face of worldly prudence, steadfast in the faith when all seems lost, calm when accused unjustly, and free from the tyranny of respect, ready to do the Father's will, no matter how difficult, silent Jesus, Give us all the graces we need to stand tall in the face of the ridicule of the world. Give the, world the, give the poor the strength not to succumb to their privation, but to be ever aware of their dignity as sons of God. Grant, grant that we might not bend to the crippling disease of worldly glory, but be willing to be deprived of all things rather than to lose your friendship. My Jesus, although we are accused daily of being fools, let the vision of quiet dignity standing before monstrous injustice give us all the courage to be your followers. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, Son of God,
the second station, Jesus carries his cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. How could any human impose such a burden on your torn and bleeding body, Lord Jesus? Each movement of the cross drove the thorns deeper into your head. How did you keep the hatred from welling up in your heart? How did the injustice of it all not ruffle your peace? The Father's will was hard on you. Why do I complain when it's hard on me? I see injustice and am frustrated. And when my plans to alleviate it seem futile, I despair. When I see those burdened with poverty suffer even more, and cross is added to cross, my heart is far from serene. I utterly fail to see the dignity of the cross as it is carried with love. I would so much rather be without it. My worldly concept is that suffering, like food, should be shared equally. How ridiculous I am, dear Lord. Just as we do not all need the same amount of material food, neither do we need the same amount of spiritual food. And that is what the cross is in my life, isn't it? Spiritual food proportional to my needs. My Jesus, you embraced your cross with great love. You knew its power. You saw the Father's will. Most of the crosses I have are of my own making. They are there because I refuse to cheerfully carry the simple one you have given me. Let me never forget that the injustice of the world may be accomplishing the justice of God in my soul. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus crucified. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. My Jesus, it seems to me that as God, you would have carried your cross without faltering, but you did not. You fell beneath its weight to show me you understand when I fall. It is pride that makes me want to shine even in pain. You were not ashamed to fall, to admit the cross was heavy. There are those whom my pride will not tolerate, as I want every, everyone to be strong, yet I am weak. I am ashamed to admit failure in anything. If the Father permits failure in my life, just as he permitted you to fall, I must know that in failure there is good that my mind will never comprehend. I must not concentrate on the eyes of others as they rest upon me in my falls. Rather, I must reach up to touch that invisible hand and drink in that invisible strength ever at my side. Weak Jesus, help all men who try so hard to be good and whose nature is constantly opposed to their walking straight and tall down the narrow road of life. Raise their heads to see the glory that is to come rather than the misery of the present moment. Your love for me 
gave you strength to rise from your fall. Look on all those whom the world considers unprofitable servants and give them the courage to be more concerned as to how they stand before you rather than their fellow men. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. My Jesus, it was a great sorrow to realize that your pain caused Mary so much grief. As Redeemer, you wanted her to share in your pain for mankind. When you glanced at each other with unutterable suffering, what gave you both the courage to carry on without the least alleviation, without anger at such injustice? It seems that you desire to suffer every possible pain to give me an example of how to suffer when my time comes. What a humiliation for you when your mother saw you in such a pitiful state, weak, helpless, and at the mercy of sinful men. Holiness exposed to evil in all hideousness. Did every moment of that short encounter seem like an eternity? As I see so much suffering in the world, there are times that I think it is all hopeless. There's an element of levity in my prayers for mankind that says, I'll pray, but what good will it do? The sick grow sicker and the hungry starve. I think of the glance between you and Mary the glance that said, let us give this misery to the Father for the salvation of souls. The Father's power takes our frustration and renews souls, gives them for a new life, a life of eternal joy, eternal happiness. It is worth it all. Give perseverance to the sick so that they can carry the cross of frustration and agony with love and resignation for the salvation of others. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus bear his cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee.
my Jesus, your tormentors enlisted Simon of Cyrene to help you carry your cross. Your humility is beyond my comprehension. Your power upheld the whole universe. Yet you permit one of your creatures to help you carry the cross. And I imagine Simon was reluctant to take part in your shame. He had no idea that all who watched and jeered at him would pass into oblivion while his name would go down in history and eternity as the one who helped his God in need. Is it not so with me, dear Jesus? Even when I reluctantly carry my cross, as Simon did, it benefits my soul. If I keep my eyes on you and watch how you suffered, I would be able to bear my cross with greater fortitude. Were you trying to tell all those who suffer from prejudice to have courage? Was Simon a symbol of all those who are hated because of race, color, or creed. As he took that beam upon his shoulders, Simon wondered why he was chosen for such a heavy burden. And now he knows. Help me, Jesus, to trust your loving providence as you permit suffering to weave itself in and out of my life. Make me understand that you looked at it and held it fondly before you passed it on to me. You watch me and give me strength, just as you did Simon. When I enter your kingdom, I shall know, as he knows, the marvels your cross has wrought in my soul. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was at the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. Have mercy on us. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. My Jesus, where were all the hundreds of peoples whose bodies and souls you had healed? Where were they when you needed someone to give you the least sign of comfort? Ingratitude must have borne down on your heart and made the cross nearly impossible to carry. There are times that I too feel all my efforts for your kingdom are futile and end in nothingness. Did your eyes roam through the crowd for the comfort of just one individual, one sign of pity, one sign of grief? My heart thrills with a sad joy when I think of one woman breaking away from fear and human respect and offering you her thin veil to wipe your bleeding face. Your loving heart, ever watching for the least sign of love, imprints the image of your torn face upon it. How can you forget yourself so completely and reward such a small act of kindness? I must admit, I have been among those who were afraid to know you, rather than like Veronica. She did not care if the whole world knew she loved you. Heartbroken Jesus, Give me that quality of soul so necessary to witness to and spread your word, to tell all people of your love for them. Send many into your vineyard so people of all nations may receive the good news. Imprint your divine image upon my soul 
and let the thin veil of my human nature bear perfect resemblance to your loving spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As well as the beginning, this now, and it shall be, for the world of thy name, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. My Jesus, one of the beautiful qualities the people admired in you was your strength in time of ridicule, your ability to rise above the occasion. But now you fall the second time apparently conquered by the pain of the cross. People who judge you by appearances made a terrible mistake. What looks like weakness was unparalleled strength. I often judge by the appearance and how wrong I am most of the time. The world judges entirely by this fraudulent method of discerning. It looks down on those who apparently have given their best and are now in need. It judges the poor as failures, the sick as useless, and the aged as a burden. How wrong that kind of judgment is in the light of your second fall. Your greatest moment was your weakest one. Your greatest triumph was in failure. Your greatest act of love was in desolation. Your greatest show of power was in that utter lack of strength that threw you to the ground. Weak and powerful Jesus, give me the grace to see beyond what is visible and to be more aware of your wisdom in the midst of weakness. Give the aged, the sick, the handicapped, the mentally impaired, the deaf, and the blind, the fruit of joy so they may be ever aware the Father's gifts and the vast difference between what the world sees and what the Father sees, so that they may glory in their weakness, so the power of God may be manifest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. station, Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. 
My Jesus, I am amazed at your compassion for others in your time of need. When I suffer, I have a tendency only to think of myself, but you forget yourself completely. When you saw the holy women weeping over your torments, you consoled them and taught them to look deeper into your passion. You wanted them to understand that the real evil to cry over was the rejection that you suffered from the chosen people, a people set apart from every other nation, who refused to accept God's Son. The act of redemption would go on, and no one would ever be able to take away your dignity as the Son of God. But the evil, greed, jealousy, and ambition in the hearts of those who should have recognized you was the issue to grieve over. To be so close to God made man and miss him completely was the real crime. My Jesus, I fear I do the same when I strain out gnats and swallow camels, when I take out the splinter of my brother's eye and forget the beam in my own. Faith is such a gift. It is such a sublime grace to possess your spirit. Why haven't I advanced in holiness of life? I miss the many disguises that you take upon yourself and see only people, circumstances, and human events not the loving hand of the Father guiding all things. Help all those who are discouraged, sick, lonely, and elderly to recognize your presence in their midst. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. My Jesus, even with the help of Simon, you fell a third time. Were you telling me that there may be times in my life when I will fall again and again, despite the help of friends and loved ones. There are times when the crosses you permit in my life are more than I can bear. It's as if all the sufferings of a lifetime are suddenly compressed into the present moment, and it is more than I can stand. Although it grieves my heart to see you so weak and helpless, it is a comfort to my soul to know that you understand my sufferings from your experience. Your love for me made you want to experience every kind of pain just so I could have someone to look to for example and courage. When I cry out from the depths of my soul, this suffering is more than I can bear. Do you whisper, yes, I understand. When I am discouraged, after my falls, many falls, do you sigh in my innermost being? Keep going, I know how hard it is to rise. There are many people who are sorely tired in body and soul, with alcohol and drug weaknesses, who try and try and fall again and again. Through the humiliation 
of this third fall. Give them the courage and perseverance to take up their cross and follow you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was at the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. It seems that every step to Calvary brought you fresh humiliation, my Jesus. How your sensitive nature recoiled at being stripped before a crowd of people. You desired to leave the life as you entered it, completely detached from all of the comforts of the world. You want me to know without a doubt that you love me with an unselfish love. Your love for me has caused you nothing but pain and sorrow. You gave everything and received nothing in return. Why do I find it so hard to be detached? In your loving mind, dear Jesus, did you look up to the Father as you stood there on that windy hill, shivering from cold and shame and trembling from fear? and ask him to have pity on those who would violate their purity and make love a mockery? Did you ask forgiveness for those whose greed would make them lie, cheat, and steal for a few pieces of cold silver? Forgive us all, dear Jesus. Look on the world with pity, for mankind has lost its way, and the principles of the world make lust a fun game and luxury a necessity. Detachment has become merely another hardship of the poor and obedience the fault of the weak. Have mercy on us and grant the people of this day the courage to see and know themselves and the light to change. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, world of thy Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. It is hard to imagine a God being nailed to a cross by his own creatures. It is even more difficult for my mind to understand a love 
that permitted such a thing to happen. As those men drove heavy nails into your hands and feet, dear Jesus, did you offer the pain as reparation for some particular human weakness and sin? Was the nail in your right hand for those who spend their lives in dissipation and boredom? Was the nail in your left hand in reparation for all consecrated souls who live lukewarm lives? Were you stretching out your arms to show us how much you love us? As the feet that walked the hot, dusty road were nailed fast, did they cramp up in a deadly grip of pain to make reparation for all those who so nimbly run the broad road of sin and self-indulgence. It seems, dear Jesus, that your love has held you bound in hand and foot as your heart pleads for a return of love. You seem to shout from the top of the hill, I love you, come to me, see, I am held fast. I cannot hurt you, only you can hurt me. How very hard is the heart that can see such love and turn away. It is not true that I too have turned away when I did not accept the Father's will with love. Teach me to keep my arms ever open to love, to forgive and to render service, willing to be hurt rather than to hurt satisfied to love and not be loved in return. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners, now and at the hour of death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by thy holy cross you have redeemed the world. God is dead. No wonder the earth quaked, the sun hid itself, the dead rose, and Mary stood by in horror. Your human body gave up its soul in death but your divinity, dear Jesus, continued to manifest its power. All creation rebelled as the word made flesh departed from this world. Man alone was too proud to see and too stubborn to acknowledge truth. Redemption was accomplished. Man would never have an excuse to forget how much you loved him. The thief on your right saw something he could not explain. He saw a man on a tree and knew he was God. His need made him see his own guilt and your innocence. The promise of eternal life made the remaining hours of his torture endurable. A common thief responded to your love with deep faith, hope, and love. He saw more than his eyes envisioned. He felt a presence that he could not explain and would not argue with. He was in need and accepted the way God designed to help him. Forgive our pride, dear Jesus, as we spend hours speculating, days arguing, and often a lifetime in rejecting your death, which is a sublime mystery. Have pity on those whose intelligence leads them to pride because they never feel the need to reach out to the man of sorrows for consolation. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. Have mercy on us. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. My Jesus, it was with deep grief that Mary took you in her arms and saw all of the wounds sin had inflicted on you. Mary Magdalene looked at your dead body with horror. Nicodemus, the man so full of human respect, who came to you by night, suddenly received the courage to help Joseph take you down from the cross. You were once more surrounded by only a few followers. When loneliness and failure crossed my path, let me think of this lonely moment and this total failure, failure in the eyes of men how wrong they were, how mistaken their concept of success. The greatest act of love was given in desolation and the most successful mission was accomplished and finished when all seemed lost. Is this not true in my life, dear Jesus? I judge my failures harshly. I demand perfection instead of holiness. My idea of success is for all to end well. According to my liking, give to all men the grace to see that during doing your will is more important than success. If failure is permitted for my greater good, then teach me how to use it to my advantage. Let me say, as you once said, that to do the will of my Father is my food. Let not the standards of this world take possession of me or destroy the good you have set for me. To be holy and to accomplish the Father's will with great love. Let me accept praise or blame, success or failure with equal serenity. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God.
fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise thee. My Jesus, you were laid to rest in a stranger's tomb. You were born with nothing of this world's goods, and you died detached from everything. When you came into the world, men slept and angels sang. Now, as you leave it, creation is silent, and only a few weep. Both events were clothed in obscurity. The majority of men live in such a way. Most of us live and die knowing and known by only a few. Were you trying to tell us, dear Jesus, how very important our lives are just because we are accomplishing the Father's will? Will we ever learn the lesson of humility that makes us content with who we are, where we are, and what we are? Will our faith ever be strong enough to see power in weakness and good in the sufferings of our lives? Will our hope be trusting enough to rely on your providence even when we have nowhere to lay our head? Will our love ever be strong enough not to take scandal in the cross? My Jesus, hide my soul in your heart as you lie in the sepulcher alone. Let my heart be a fire to keep you warm. Let my desire to know and love you be like a torch to light up the darkness. Let my soul sing softly a hymn of repentant love as the hours pass and your resurrection is at hand. Let me rejoice, dear Jesus, with all the angels in a hymn of praise and thanksgiving for so great a love, so great a God, so great a day. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. Prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. I beseech thee, O Lord, that the fire and the strength of thy love may absorb my soul from all things that are under heaven, that I may die for love of thy love, as thou didst die for love of my love. Amen. Act of contrition, O my God. I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins, because I dread the loss of heaven, the pains of hell. Most of all, because I offended thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. From the resolve, with the help of thy grace, to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. Closing prayer of Mother Angelica. My Jesus, I have traveled your way of the cross. Help me to see the Father's will in every incident of my daily life. This is what you did. You saw the Father's will in your persecutors, your enemies, and your pain. You saw beauty in the cross and embraced it as a desired treasure. Teach me the lessons contained in my cross, the wisdom of its necessity, the beauty of its variety, 
and the fortitude that accompanies even the smallest cross. Mary, my mother, obtain for me the grace to be Jesus to my neighbor and to see my neighbor in Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>